So get those, you know, get your ego off your back and just start putting yourself out there and, and don't be afraid to tell people who you are and what you do. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of It Takes Grit. I've got a special guest in the house with me today. I'm so excited to introduce you to Whitney Lee. Whitney has the most incredible, oh my goodness, I love her business. I love what she does. She has a social media agency and it's specifically for travel. And so she built this business. You're going to hear so many things today about how to get out of your own way, ripping off that Band-Aid, you know, why to finally show up, helping that happen, the perception versus reality, what really goes on behind the scenes, because I know that's what we all really want to know, how to create confidence, how life is always happening for us, and treating your brand like a business. So Whitney, I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, and we got to meet at Chris Harder's Mastermind. And I remember like you were one of the first people that I met and I was just like, oh my goodness, this woman has like such like a, such a presence, like such something about her. And I was like, I wanna like, I wanna talk more to her. So that's why I'm bringing her on the show and she has the most incredible story, which is what we're gonna kick off with today. So Whitney, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from and how do you get to being this like super uber successful, you know, business owner? Oh, thank you so much. Okay, well, I'll give you the quick rundown on me and a little bit of where I came from. So I was born and raised in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We're talking like very deep south. Um, funny, my, both of my parents are from there. They've known each other their whole life. It's not that small of a town. Like people think of Mississippi and they think of like literally one red light. Like it, Hattiesburg is, you know, like 100,000 people. So um, not too tiny, but my parents knew each other. My grandparents knew each other very small town, um, you know, where, uh, you know, every single week, you know, we all went to church together. I grew up in a very, very spiritual and religious family um, in a good way. Nothing, um, you know, it was all very positive. We, both sides of the family went to church together every Sunday. Um, I honestly had a very, very happy childhood, um, which I'm very, very grateful for. My parents are still married to this day. I am the youngest of three kids, um, so the baby of the family. But I, so I went to um, undergrad there in Hattiesburg, University of Southern Mississippi, Golden Eagles. Um, and I chose to do communication because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And other people kept telling me that they thought I would be good at that. And, you know, I felt like communication was pretty broad. Like I could kind of take that in a lot of different directions. Um, so I did communication undergrad. Um, and then afterwards, I had a group of friends that were all moving to Destin, Florida, not that far away. So Destin's in the panhandle of Florida, just about four hours from Hattiesburg. And uh, so I told my parents I was job searching and moved to Destin um, to live on the beach and work down there and got this crazy idea. Well, I, I actually was doing a little bit of job searching, um, but everything I kept coming up with was like a sales position and or like pharmaceutical sales. And I, I was just like not cut out for that. But I, I don't know. I didn't even really know what I was um, <clears throat> honestly qualified for. So I on. Um, at the very last minute, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to grad school. This is a great idea. Like uh, I need to be accomplishing something. So I decided to go to grad school. I found this program, Integrated Marketing Communications, which sounded pretty cool. Um, and went to Florida State uh, on a total whim. And, uh, but I kept moving back to Destin every summer to of course, hang out on the beach, right? Um, I And Destin is a very heavily, um, uh, it's a very heavy tourism area. This is like the vacation Mecca for anyone who lives in the Southeast. So if anyone's listening in that area, the Southeast of the US, if you say Destin, Florida, they're like, of course. Uh, so I got a internship at a hotel there and um, really helped launch their social media presence. Uh, this, I, this was when the like page was just becoming a thing. That seems like forever ago, but it really wasn't that long. I promise I'm not that old. Um, so 
I helped the, um, the hotel launch their like page. Um, and then I actually, so it was a hotel, but it also had like a shopping center, lifestyle center connected to it. And we planned events down there and um, helped drive traffic to all the restaurants and boutiques and stuff. So um, when I got a big promotion to a Hilton on the other side of town, I had a lot of people from the village back at the other resort saying, hey, can you help me? I, I know you have a new job now, but um, you know, they saw me as the Facebook girl. And um, so can you help me get one of those like pages? And uh, so I, my business kind of started off of the like page. Um, so I, I finally, um, well, I had my little side hustle going and I finally ripped off the Band-Aid and uh, told the, the big corporate job that I was leaving. And it was pretty interesting. Um, my family, you know, I, I told my parents what I was gonna do. And I come from um, a long line of people that are not risk takers. And then usually I am not a risk taker either, or I haven't been in, in my, most of my life. And uh, this was the one time, you know, that I was like, you know what, I should really do this. I should really do this. And I was making enough money to like get by. And uh, I was just miserable at the corporate job, not because of the people, but just sitting in a room by myself all day. I just kept remembering, I was asking myself like, <clears throat> is this what being an adult is? Cause this is awful. Like, I hate this. So I told my parents, I'm like, hey, this is the plan. I've got this little side hustle. And my parents were like, no, don't do it don't do it. Like, uh, you know, keep on making the extra money on the side, but like this corporate job is like very steady. Like you get insurance, you get benefits, like you prayed for this job. Like don't, you know, just because it's, it doesn't seem fun. Don't let it go. That's part of being an adult. Like work isn't always going to be fun. And, uh, you know, that was the first time in my life that I really just, because I, I respect my parents a lot and they're very, very amazing parents. They've always been there for me. Um, but that was the first time in my life that I was just like, you know what? No. Mm -hmm. Going against my parents. I was 25 years old and I was just like, I can't do this for the rest of my life. So that was 2013. And since then, like we have just grown um, leaps and bounds. So you know, from my history with hotels and resorts, that's kind of how we launched into the travel, tourism, hospitality space. I always say we represent all kinds of people in the hospitality business from experiences like spas, uh, resorts, um, uh, anything like that involves a booking as well. Like we do some interesting things like escape rooms and um, uh, boating excursions, things like that but you know really our specialty lies within resorts and hotels and that full experience so we are a team of five now um and we've just been rocking and rolling ever since and continuing to see everything grow that's so exciting and congratulations first of all on all of your success and having that belief you know at 25 to be like you know what, I believe in myself, or I might not even believe in myself that much, but this is what I'm just called to do. So do you feel like that was the first time you really ripped the bandaid off and was like, oh my goodness, I'm doing this? Yes, um, because again, I am not a risk taker. Usually I'm the person that's like the safe bet. And but also both of my parents are that way. Um, you know, and I, I had a lot of issues with scarcity mindset of like, well, what happens if I let this job go and then it was the wrong choice and then I'm screwed and I don't have any other clients or, and then I have, you know, I, so many times in my life, I let fear of regret stop me from making a decision, like being fearful that down the road, I might regret this, like mm -hmm. it, it just overthinking it. I think a lot of people can probably identify with that as just completely overthinking it. But, um, after, you know, that was the biggest risk I had ever taken at that point in my life. And ever since then, like I've started to realize that like the risks are the best part. Like if you're risking something, that's when something good usually happens. Like, 
uh, you know, they always say like in poker or in gambling or whatever, which I don't even gamble, but you got to bet big to win big, right? You got to put something on the line. Um, and I think that was the first time it really pushed me to be like, it's sink or swim, Whitney. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's no safety net. And that's actually what I really needed. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because we think of like, what is a big decision? Why is it a big decision to change jobs? Why can that be a small decision? Why is it a big job decision to like move to a different town, to a different country? And, you know, as you were saying that, you're like, you know, it was just a, it was a decision, but we get so like overwhelmed or like scared and we don't take the risk because in our head, it's a big decision. What if it just wasn't a big decision? What if it wasn't? It yeah. would be like, Everyone would just do everything that they felt like they wanted to do because there's nobody outside saying, oh my goodness, are you sure about that? Like, this is a big decision. Like, I think having a kid is a big decision. I don't think changing jobs is a big decision. <laughs> Touche. I had a mentor one time that used to tell me like, when a big decision comes up, here's what you need to think to yourself. Okay, if, if I physically, in, in no way, if I could not screw this up at all, like, what choice would you make? And when I think back now, I'd be like, oh yeah, well, yeah, I would quit that job in two seconds. I was miserable. Like, so, you know, if you're grappling with a decision today and even now when I grapple with decisions big and small, I think to myself, like, if I could not screw this up, what, what would be my first initial of like, I would do this. If there were no consequences, no screw ups or anything. So, and ever since then, it's really, really helped me make decisions um because in business i can make decisions all day long of like this is what this business needs this business needs this this is the communication we need to, you know this is the messaging for this here's what we need to be posting for them but when it comes down to like my personal decisions sometimes i find myself like completely paralyzed it's so strange mm -hmm. one of your um instagram posts that i was reading the other day you just won an award and it was something that you've been waiting a while to, you know, receive. What was the turning point? Because often I know this in my, my business, like we see other people walking across the stage, getting this promotion or they're getting this or getting this magazine. And we kind of like watch, but we're not really, we want to be the person up there being it, but we haven't actually made the move to make it happen. And that's something that happened to you and you recently won it. So why did you finally, you say, I finally showed up. You know, I finally figured out, or I fi finally told myself, like, it can't be that hard to figure it out. Other people are doing this, you know? And instead of just trying to figure it out on my own, I actually just started reaching out to people who had won stuff. And I was like, hey, where do you start with this? Or like, hey, you know, when you, how do you know what to put in, put into this entry? Or what do you, how do you do that? And finally, when you talk to somebody who's been there before, suddenly it's not that terrifying anymore. It, it was weird. I just never ever reached out to anyone for help. So, um, and I guess that's like typical Whitney was I, I'd always try to figure out things on my own. And so once I figured out what was actually involved in the process of doing this for this award, I thought to myself, like, I can totally do that. Like, you know, and break it up into small pieces and, and go for it. So uh, and I, I actually have another one of those moments coming up here this year. Um, I've been working on something and I have put it off for literally five years. Um, and I'm getting ready this year. So stay tuned. It hasn't happened yet, but stay tuned. You're not even uh, going to tell us. I love that. Cause I have someone that always says it can't be that hard. It can't be that hard. And it's like, nothing is really that hard. It's just about figuring it out and doing it. Like it's, it doesn't have to be that hard. Well, going back to your example about having a baby, um, I, I know that childbirth is not easy at all. It's probably the most challenging thing in the world. I think most people can agree on that. I don't have a kid, um, but I look at some of my other friends that made it through and I'm like, all right, if she can make it through, I got this. Like I can do that. Like if she can make it through, like, so can I, you know? Um, but I think we need to look at more stuff in life like that, you know? Or even starting a business, you know, people get so overwhelmed by the idea of like, oh, I could never own my own business. It's just so much that goes into it. Well, just reach out to somebody who's done it before. And, you know, yeah, it is a lot of work, but nothing that you can't figure out. Like, come on, everything is doable, you know?
And you often look at people, we're going to go into this now, but you often look at people and go, oh my goodness, like they're so confident. They've got all their stuff together. Like I could never be like them. Whereas the reality is perception is very different to the reality. And a lot of times people come up to you and say, how are you so confident? You've got it all together. Like what's really going on in your life? I get that all the time. And I'm like literally laughing on the inside when they say that. I remember when I got hired for that first job at the hotel and I, they, I mean, this is a huge resort. So they got thousands of resumes and I just straight up asked my boss, I was like, what made you pick me over all of those other people? Like I kind I felt honored, but I also was like, wow, why me? You know? And her response was, well, you were just so confident. And I literally burst out laughing and I was like, because my internal dialogue and still to this day, it's something that I battle all the time. And I think everybody does is like, um, your internal dialogue is telling you every reason it's not going to work out and how you're not pretty enough and you're not skinny enough and you're not the right fit for this or that or whatever, or you're phony or whatever. Um, but what other people see is so different. Um, and so, I, and I still get that all the time of like, oh, you're just so confident. You're so confident. And I, I don't even know if I really consider myself to be a confident person. I think I've just gotten to the point where I'm just like, this is me. If I don't go for this, like life doesn't last forever. If I don't go for this, well, what's the worst that can happen? Someone can be like, no, we don't want you. Or no, you didn't, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get the award. Or you know what, what is the worst that can happen? Mm-hmm. Right. That's so unbelievably true. And how do you create that confidence? You just show up, you just do it. And people think that you're confident because you're just doing the do and you don't say, Oh, I can't really do this because I'm not feeling right or whatever. It's like, Hey, are there some times where I'm not confident, but I'm like, I got to freaking show up anyway. So I think that that's where the misconception could be. It's like, Oh, you're really confident. It's like, no, I just showed the fuck up. I just yeah, show up I just over, and over and over again. And when I don't feel like it, I show up over and over and over again. And I think that that could be where that misconception is. It's like, I'm not super confident. I just, I'm just have a integrity that I need to show up. Yeah. And you know what, I, I guess I go back to saying like, I don't consider myself a confident person, I guess in com internally I don't, but in comparison to other people, maybe so, but I think it's because for so long people have told me how confident I am. Now think about it like in this way, like if somebody told you, every single day, how beautiful you were, eventually you'd be like, I'm pretty, you know, like I look good because all these people wouldn't tell me that if I didn't really look good, you know? So it's some, you know, something like that too, that works on a positive and negative wavelength of like, people kept telling me all the time how confident I am. And finally I was like, you know what? I guess I am pretty confident. Hmm. Sure, yeah. Or so the action that you take too creates more confidence. Like yeah. the more action you take, you have five people in your team now, like that's got to give you confidence when you're like, oh my goodness, other people are coming on this journey with me. Like, but it didn't start off like that. It started off with one person trying to figure it out and then it's just growing. And that gives you more confidence as you start to take more action. I always say, you know, take more action, you get more belief, you get more confident. Exactly. If you're having an issue um, getting a motivation to start, starting is half the battle. Um, I read Mel Robbins five second rule. Um, it's a great book. Even if you just listen to the audio book and she talks about how like, you're never going to feel like working out every single day. I love to work out. I know you do too, but I don't feel like doing it every single day, but you just get up and do it. You just, sometimes when you don't feel like it, you push through. And so the five second rule is talking about like, you know, when your alarm goes off and you're like, I don't want to get up, like you five, four, three, two, one, and you get your ass up. You know, like, and you'll ultimately not only be more confident, but just so proud of yourself that you push through. So if anybody out there, definitely five second rule is a great little book to tap into for motivation. You talk about things, um, life is happening for us, not to us. And I completely a hundred percent agree with you on that. What's something that's happened to you in your business that from the outside, everyone's like, oh, everything is going great. But you were like, oh, shit just really hit the fan. Like what really happens behind the business? Because it's amazing. You get to work with all these incredible brands and hotels and everything looks great. But like, tell us something where like shit hit the fan and you were like, oh my goodness, I got to pull this through. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, let me think about, well, obviously I think everybody can relate to this one issue. Um, uh, with the COVID-19 crisis uh, last year, you know, working with a lot of resorts and hotels, obviously SNP, like the moment that hit. So it didn't seem like everything was okay on the outside, um, but it immediately sent us into this like, oh my God, what's gonna happen mode. Um, and, you know, that was actually, if you look on my Instagram, the award you were talking about, that's the, the campaign we just won an award for. We did this whole mermaid campaign for um, one of our resorts in Florida that um, that was all that happened during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, so, you know, we just had to take it and figure it out. Like we couldn't go dark. These people were heartbroken because their vacations were canceled. Everything that all of us had to look forward to, including vacation, was canceled. Um, and so we figured out like, how do we take that and, and spin it? And we came up with this fun mermaid video series where we, they had a mermaid that like a real life mermaid that sits by their pool. Um, think like Disney princess, like she's got the full costume with the tail and everything. And, um, all these people were like, I can't believe we're missing Misty this year, like in the comments and things like that. So we were like, okay, we got to figure out a way to get Misty on camera, on social media. Like, what do we got to do? So um, we put together a video series of her reading children's books uh, next to the pool as something for people who had kids at home, no school, for them to do with their kids. Some Q&As where the kids could send in questions through their mom and dad and the mermaid would respond to the questions each week. So, um, you know, it, it was crazy because we had no idea what was coming, but the hotel had just finished a $15 million renovation. So we had this whole plan built out of like, we're gonna unveil these incredible renovations. It's gonna be the biggest summer and poof. Like within two seconds, we threw away that whole plan and we were like, all right, starting over, what are we doing? Okay, mermaid, um, what can the mermaid be doing? How, you know, let's film her. And it ended up being a massive, massive award-winning, campaign. So uh, sometimes the best things come out of the uh, holy shit moments where you're like, what do we do? You know, like, oh, what now? So uh, yeah, it, it actually turned out for the best. The hotel ended up having, besides the two months that they were closed, the hotel went on to have the most successful year in the history of the property. So uh, I just got goosebumps twice then. One when you were like saying about, you know, how you won the award and it was went through that period of time. And secondly, to hear that they had the best year, because sometimes when stuff is completely not what we think is going to happen, it allows us to be more creative. Like you probably would have never come up with a series for the mermaids. And maybe that's even going to be an extension now. So that when the kids go, where do you want to go? They've been reminded all the time because they watch the mermaid stories. And they're like, no, I want to go back to that hotel, mom. I want to go back and see Misty. Rather than them just forgetting about the mermaid at all. And they go on to some other hotel. You know, uh, it's like, who knows? That could have been the best thing that ever happened. And Misty is a celeb. She got on the front page of a magazine. She's a cover girl now. Like she got coverage all over the US, like over a half a million views on these videos. She has her own children's book. And now the kids buy that in the gift shop and they go out there and she's, I mean, like Misty has, she's always been fun and a unique part of the hotel. But now like Misty is a staple of the hotel and people come just to see Misty. So how long has she worked uh, at the hotel for? I'm sorry, what? How long has she worked at the hotel for? Um, she's been doing this. I want to say this would be her third summer doing this. So she had been there one year before, long enough for people to kind of know who she was, the people who come every year. Uh, but last year was when she really just blew up into stardom. We do Misty the Mermaid birthday parties now. She's on the big LED sign when you pull up at the hotel. I mean, it's like mermaid everything, so. Wow, how exciting for her too. I mean, like you think, first of all, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna have a job this summer. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've morphed into something even bigger than I was at the time. So, wow, that's a beautiful story. She's a celeb. <laughs> I love it. So when you're talking about treating your brand like a business, 
how do you shift from it being a hobby where it costs you money to a real life business? Was there a moment where you were like, this is not a hobby anymore. This is a business and I need to like treat it like a business. Because a lot of times I find that people start a side hustle, whether it's a network marketing or whatever it is. And it's like, there is that, that time where you're like, oh no, I'm going to be serious now. So how did you make that identification to be you know, an actual business? Um, the first thing I would tell people to do is stop calling yourself a freelancer. A lot of people in the service, like PR, social media, when they don't work for a big corporation, they call themselves a freelancer, cut that out. Like, no, um, a freelancer basically is like, it, it tells me you don't take yourself seriously. So call yourself a business. Um, one of the things that was challenging for me was to have the confidence when I would go to events and um, networking opportunities and chamber events and things like that, the, uh, to shake someone's hand and say, hi, my name's Whitney and I have my own social media firm. It's called Socially. Like, you know, to have that confidence of not just like, oh, well, I do PR and social media. Like, train yourself of what you say and take yourself seriously because if you don't, no one else is going to. Um, and then you just got to be consistent, you know, um, know what you're offering. Uh, one of the biggest challenges I had starting off was um, trying to do anything because I just had this fear of not making enough money to survive. And so I would do anything that I knew how to do. I would help people make websites. I would do social media, PR events, um, sponsorship. I would do um, advertising placements. I mean, all this kind of stuff. And I would take on anything just because I had a fear of a scarcity problem. And, you know, over the years, I quickly learned, like, you, you cannot be everything. You know, you've got to specialize in something. And that's awesome because then you can focus on that. So I don't know why we stretch ourselves so thin trying to be everything when you would just be a specialist of social media for tourism, social media for hospitality or you know, focus on what you love and you do best and stop offering all that other stuff. Because when you confuse your potential client, they don't know really who you are and, and people don't want a jack of all trades. People want a specialist, somebody who specializes in X, you know? Uh, so get really clear on what you offer, what you're best at and really take yourself seriously consistently show up. And the last thing I'll say is um, you, you've got to put yourself out there. I know this is the most uncomfortable part of all of it, but put yourself out there. If, you know, for me, it was like um, even just posting on my social media, announcing that I had started a business was so nerve wracking. Cause I, at the time being like 25 or 26, all the, the story I was telling myself was no one's going to take me seriously. They're going to think, oh, cute little 20 something. Oh, you started your own little social media, Facebook business. That's cute. That's really cute. Um, and that's the story I was telling myself. But obviously people did take me seriously because they hired me, right? Mm -hmm. So get those, you know, get your ego off your back and just start putting yourself out there and, and, don't be afraid to tell people who you are and what you do uh, because that's when actually it's amazing what will come to you if you just put yourself out there and you follow through, you know? It's so true. That's a hundred percent true. So what is coming up for you for the end of this year? What are you most excited about? Um, okay. So a couple of things um, we are, you know, obviously the world of travel is coming back big time. Uh, so we're getting very busy in the world of resorts and influencer campaigns and all of the above uh, for all of our resort and hospitality clients and also just seeing how the industry is going to change in general. Um, but something I haven't um, fully launched yet, I'm still in the works on it, um, is creating my own community for women like me and you. Um, you know, I, I haven't really... Um, defined exactly what all we're going to be doing, but it's going to be all about type A women and about how hard we push ourselves um, and how, you know, doing less is going to create more. 
uh, because if anything, over this last year of quarantine and the rebound and all the above, I have learned that I have done so much less and I have made more money. When I stop, you know, obviously I'm a motivated person, uh, but when I have stopped pushing myself so, so, so hard and actually just taken a deep breath and let things come to me, uh, it's been amazing to see that the biggest year in business, 2020, 2021 is about to top it, but 2020 was my biggest year in business because I stopped forcing it so much with the masculine energy and really kind of uh, settled into receiving mode. So type A ladies out there, I'm, I'm working on something for you. That's amazing. Yeah. And using that feminine energy, like we sometimes forget it's type A masculine business women that our feminine energy can actually be a great asset to us as well. So thank you so much for your time, Whitney. I appreciate you. I'm going to chat with you a little bit because I'm coming to your area in a couple of weeks time. So I want to definitely hook up with you and uh, let's go for it. Let's go for a, a cocktail, a sunset cocktail. And lastly, where can everybody find you all over social media? Where's all your stuff? Yes, absolutely. So on Instagram, you can find me at the Whitney Lee, T-H-E Whitney Lee. Uh, you can also check out the agency if you want to find us on Instagram. It's socially, but it's spelled like my last name, L-E-E. -E, so social, L-E-E, -E, P-R, Media Co. Um, and you can also check out our website. It's besocially.com. So B as in boy, E, socially.com. But yes, my main spot is Instagram. You can also hook up with me on LinkedIn, but would love for you guys to shoot me a DM, especially all you type A ladies out there. Stay tuned. I'll, I'll, I've got something coming out for you. Yay. And we're going to put everything of Whitney's details all in the description and the details below. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening and watching on YouTube. We love you. Make sure that you go and give Whitney a follow. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.